I wrote a piece recently for a magazine that, that, that plays very much in what mm-hmm. all the movies have been, but Django in particular, about how food is used for power in your movies. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's actually funny. It was, um, I think when Edgar Wright read the script for Inglorious Bastards, he goes, well, one of the things that I loved is the way you have the Nazis just luxuriating in these French restaurants. Like, they're just gluttons with their pate and their creme brulee. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny, though, because um, Calvin Candy... Um, the slave on a plate by Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, exactly. He's always indulging his sweet tooth throughout the whole movie. And he's got these... Horrible teeth. Jacked up teeth, yeah. Uh, we would call, call British pop star. Right, teeth. exactly. You do not have anything to drink. Can I get you a tasty refreshment? Yes. I'll have a beer. I want a bar. Roscoe, a beer for the man with the beard, and I will have a Polynesian pearl diver. Do not spare the rum. Now, I never would have written anything as obvious as, oh, guess what? Calvin Candy eats a lot of candy. <laughs> Yet, Leo just kept ingesting sweet crap throughout the whole making of the movie for his character. And while I think that would have been an obvious idea, writing it down and actually trying to do it as a, as a, as a metaphor for the character, in practice, it was just delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but it almost makes sense for the character because he almost is yeah. a lot of times having sugar reactions, like yeah. sugar highs and yeah. sugar crashes. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, he definitely he, he could definitely take the Twinkie defense. <laughs> <laughs> White cake. I don't go in for sweets. Thank you. But I, I love that for you, and I wonder where this comes mm. from, this thing that food becomes this real metaphor for the way power is used in the movie, the way people exert power. The mm-hmm. scene where Sam Jackson comes mm-hmm. in Pulp Fiction mm-hmm. and basically jacks yeah. the, 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 the Kahuna burger. Hmm. This is a tasty burger. From then on, food really exists in these, in these movies for you mm-hmm. as a way that power is conveyed. I think it just always uh, associated like getting to know somebody – trading back and forth information, finding out if you're compatible, anything like that always happens over restaurants and dinners. Mm. Don't you just love it when you come back from the bathroom to find your food waiting for you? I've always found uh, restaurant scenes to be kind of ritualistic. And usually inside of those rituals becomes, I, I, I've never thought about exactly the way you're saying as far as this power thing, but it happens because I have rituals play out. And some of them are the rituals of the, the balance of power shifting they're or being established. They're, they're always about either that, that mm-hmm. establishment of power, somebody basically mm-hmm. and establishing a power over food. Yeah, yeah. And, and a sort of consequence of that, mm-hmm. or constant with that rather, is that people eat in your movies. Mm-hmm. Often when people sit down in restaurants and many other oh, movies, yeah, they don't no, I'm, eat. I'm they, a big, yeah, uh, it really, really bugs me when I watch actors avoid eating in scenes because they don't want to have to, you know, do nine takes where they're, you know, eating the donut. I eat nine different donuts. You know, I don't, and I even, you hear, they even talk, you even hear them talking about it on the uh, um, commentaries. You know what they put on french fries and hollands instead of ketchup? Or what? Yeah. Mayonnaise? Uh, hey. <laughs> I've seen them do it, man. They fucking drown them in this shit. Yeah. And it's like, that's just BS. You have, you know, you have to indulge. You have to eat. If you're supposed to enjoy it, it should make me hungry. I actually do kind of like, and then this is not apropos to anything that we're, t- you know, uh, per se, but I do like the fact that um, when you see my movies, you know, there might be one drink or one piece of food that the audience fixates on and the movie actually makes them hungry for that they want that once they get out of the theater when you watch jackie brown you want a screwdriver <laughs> you want to have some orange juice and vodka like ordell you're, you're you're ready for it baby i really could use me some wise i defy anyone to not want strudel when you see inglorious bastards it doesn't mean you, you know it doesn't matter that just this nazi guys eating it it's like it just man that that strudel looks good uh same thing for the nachos in death proof you just want them and but you know it's interesting what you're saying about the power because it's like um in every way shape and form jules coming in there as this black male just completely dominating by taking a bite out of the guy's hamburger What's like the one thing you never do? You don't offer your hamburger for a stranger to take a big bite right out the middle of it. 
You don't do that. You could offer fries. There's all kinds of pizza. There's all kinds of things you could offer up to a stranger. But to take a bite right out of the middle of your burger is just not done. He took it. He took it from him. We go through all the movies. I mean, mm-hmm. even the fight in, in Kill Bill Part Two. The, the uh, mm-hmm. you know, be just think, wanting the rice. I mean, that that's mm-hmm. literally a, uh, the way f- uh, power is used to sort of get food across. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And it's very much a part of Django Unchained as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the one of the drawbacks of doing a movie about slavery in the antebellum south is I just can't put my characters in a restaurant and have them discuss the plot. <laughs> I, I literally remember when I, because I hate to have like expositional sequences and so I always try to overload them with other stuff so you don't quite realize you're having the story told to you. Because you they, do that at the beginning of uh, yeah. Inglourious Bastards over the milk, right. yeah, which exactly. is another th- power there. And yeah, that's a big one as far as power is concerned. But you know, it's like, oh man, things would be so easy if, if Schultz and Jenko could just go into a restaurant in, <laughs> in Nashville and, and discuss their plans. Basically, I'm just going to walk the earth. What you mean, walk the earth? You know, like Kane in Kung Fu. Walk from place to place, meet people, get in adventures. 